struggling along here in the verse by verse study of 2 Timothy. And we're in chapter 4. So 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 4, 2 Timothy 4. And I taught last week on verse 1 and 2. So this week we're on 3 and 4 if we can get, get that far. Uh, doctrinal passages for the church, you know, for the pastor, for the preacher, the teacher, the evangelist, and just for the church. Um, we'll pick it up in verse 3 and 4, but let me read verse 1 and 2 for the sake of context. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. So uh, thank you for the opening prayer today, and Brother Steve, and a prayer on the, on the lessons and the classes and the kids and everybody that's uh, junior church after a while and all that's going on here at the church. So, um, But in verse 3, where we want to start, for the time will come, and uh, this time is the end time, I believe, for the church, or the last days for the church. And everybody has said it since I've been alive, we're living in the last days. And I'm 70 years old. So I've been hearing this ever since my ears could hear it from about five, six, I think. Um, five, six years old, I can remember. Uh, preachers preaching on the end time. The world's coming to an end. And boy, they'd get over there and talk about Matthew chapter 24 and talk about the signs in the sky and different things and the moon turning to blood and all that. And we understand that's a tribulation period, but my point is preachers were preaching about the end times when I was just a kid. Oh, now, even more so, I believe, it's suited to the doctrine of we live in the last days. For the time will come. Uh, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, we were there all weeks ago, but you're right there on the page. Look at that verse. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Paul has always been uh, appropriate and busy about reminding the church you're in the last days. And by the way, the church... Uh, the church period as we know it, if, it, if it started, let's just say it started at the cross. I'm not saying that's a place to start it, but let's say it started at the cross. And from the cross till now, if, if we count time any place close to right, it's been a couple thousand years, plus or minus 20 or 40. So um, the thought on that thing is the church age was supposed to last Two days. You say two days. Well, yeah, as a day is a, a thousand years or so, if that's the case, by Bible definition, the church period should last approximately 2,000 years. And Peter talked about as one day is with the Lord a thousand years, so on and so forth. Uh, so really, it's a short period of time when you think about time segments in the Bible. The millennial reign is said to be, which happens after the church, is said to be a thousand year reign. And you get that out of Revelations. He says seven times, thousand years, a thousand years, a thousand years. So people say, how do you know the millennium's a thousand years wrong? Well, it's a thousand years, a thousand. He says it seven times. <laughs> the more elusive one is the church. But uh, he didn't say the church will be 2,000 years. He said, needs be I go through Samaria. And he only stayed in Samaria two days. And Samaria is a picture of the Gentile world and he, his interest in Gentiles getting saved. And, and so the church is Gentile, by the way. It's a Gentile bride. Now, when you get saved, you know, you're grafted in. So 
uh, there's one race, the human race. Don't forget that. Amen? <laughs> so, um, uh, so the church age is approximately 2,000 years long. And that would, that would suit it well if, if we count time in the Bible and from Genesis or the, or the beginning of creation till the cross was about 4,000 years. Then if you get the church age done, there's 6,000 years. Then you get the millennial reign done, there's 7,000 years. See, where'd you get that seven thing? Well, there's only seven days. God said he works by sevens. And that thing follows right on through. Uh, day one, day two, and it's all laid out in the book of Genesis when we teach the book of Genesis. So what I'm trying to say is because of all that we know about the Bible theologically and all that we know about the Bible numerically, and if the math is any place close to right, and I believe it's probably pretty close, we live in the last times. So Paul was right when he said, this time, for the time will come. And then in, in chapter 3, verse 1, this know also that in the last days, he talked about the days of the church, in, last, in the last days perilous times shall come. So twice he said it, uh, and then he'll say it again. Well, I didn't write them all down. A number of times he uses the word times and last days. So uh, take that just as a side note. Uh, so, and then 2 Timothy 4, 6, I ought to give you this one. 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we're right there, and we'll be to verse 6 in a few minutes, but I want you to see the repetitiveness of this. He says in verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Now I want you to notice that time always refers to a segment of time, not necessarily the last time. At that time, the definition is always defined by the context. He was talking about his death uh, when he should be, when he should die. For I am now ready to be offered that. He's talking about his demise. And the time of my departure is at hand. So that meant it was within days or weeks and this was writ written in the latter part of his life. It might be the last book that he wrote, being in prison. So time to be offered is not the time of the last days. You've got to be careful. It's defined. I said time, time to be offered. I should have said de defined. Time defined is always defined by its context. There you go. My time might not be your time. What's the book of Ecclesiastes say? There's a time for this and a time for that and a time for that. And that's right. So that's how it goes. All right, move on. Okay. Uh, when they will not endure sound doctrine, that part of the verse, uh, we live at that time. Say, what time is that? Last days. <laughs> So what's going on? Well, one of the premier things that will go on that will earmark this age is they will not endure sound doctrine. You say, wait a minute, who? Who'd you say? Who? The word they shows up. Don't you love the word they? People say, they say don't do that. And you look at them and say, who's they? That's a good question. Now, the Bible never leaves you hanging like that. The Bible lets you know by the context the word they is found in. Now, if it's an abstract they, don't pay any attention to it. Uh, they say playing with toads. They say, they say playing with toads will give you warts. Huh? <laughs> and you can think of a whole bunch of them things they say. I don't think I ever got a wart from playing with a toad, Amen. So they is descriptive of some particular group. Don't you love the English language? Uh, and, and I do, and that's why God chose it. The more you find out about the English language, the more you understand why the Word of God is in the 1611 English Bible. In 2 Timothy 3, 6, for of this sort are they. Now he's going to tell you who the they are. And remember our verse that we're studying, uh, he, when they will not endure sound doctrine, it's a specific group. Now you'll find these people in church, you'll find these people outside of the church, 
And I believe because Paul brings it up, he's warning Timothy that they'll even be in the church. They're just not in the world today. They, <laughs> quote unquote, are everywhere. And they, quote unquote, are in the church. Amen. <laughs> and they are sometimes in the pulpit. Be careful. Uh, when they will not endure sound doctrine, you'll have people come in, here, here's how, how, how it'll start. I don't know if I just swallow all that like Brother Phil does, Brother Tom. They've even got Jeremiah believing it. What's that? What, 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 what is that? Well, man, they, they just trust God by faith for everything. Amen. You mean you don't trust God by faith? No. I don't live in fear of somebody mugging me. I was telling Brother Lonnie that today. I... But I don't go down on Vine Street and try to get mugged either. Huh? Huh? I mean, I got my CCP in my pocket and my 45 under the seat. Amen. Say why? I just, I, I, I refuse being a man of faith, saved by faith. Uh, I refuse to live in fear. I'd rather fear God. Well, take this thing going on today, this pandemic thing people live in fear of the thing they're shuddering they're sitting over in a dark corner drooling you say why i'm the guy that ought to be drooling i'm i'm the guy at 70 years old here i don't want to catch it i know it's real i know it's out there and pastor's right you gotta have your head screwed on right but being a man of faith i'm sure not going to sit around in fear on it. say well do you wear your mask sure i wear my mask i got my mask in the car bonnie's got her mask and uh we're pretty reclusive we don't go many places so if i do go someplace i drag that mask out and put it on and I go and get my shopping done. When I come out, I take it off. Now, you see people driving down the road all by themselves in their vehicle with a mask on. Now, you tell me what's wrong with that person. I don't know. They must think they look pretty or they're living in fear or something. I, I don't know. I just, I just, help me out here now. Boy, I got way off base, didn't I, huh? Uh, I was going to wear my mask up to the pulpit and try to teach in it, but I thought, no, that's taking it one step too far. I, and I wear a mask. I, you know, I think through this stuff. When I wear a mask when I get in the grocery store or Walmart. You ever see the folks come into Walmart? Huh? <laughs> that's a treat. Of course, I'm there with them. <laughs> yeah, and so I wear that mask because I... Watch out now. But I don't want to bring it home to Bonnie. She's a homebody. She stays home. And she said, did you wear your mask? I said, yeah, honey, I wore my mask. I don't want to. She said, well, did everybody else have theirs on? I says, no, but mine's working fine. You'll get that in a minute. Amen. But isn't it funny how people live in fear? And, and I'm not talking fear of just that. They live in fear of a lot of things. Boy, they... They don't want to go out at night. They're afraid the haints will get them, huh? Spook behind every bush, you know. Some of us were raised that way. But when they will not endure sound doctrine, a lot of folks don't have the faith that somebody steep in the faith has when they put their faith and trust in this book and in the God that saved them. And I figure, man, at 70 years old, if I should get sick, God forbid, and I should die, how bad is that? Huh? If I'm going to heaven and I believe what I'm preaching and believe what I'm believing, yeah, faith. Yeah, that's right. Have a great day. What did John R. Rice say when that guy tried to mug him in the parking lot and whip that gun out on him? And this was 50, 60, 70 years ago. He said, son, put that gun away. Don't threaten me with heaven. <laughs> People that get saved, they just look at it different, amen? <laughs> now, we're not looking to get mugged or looking to get shot or looking to get run over or, or get this pandemic. I, got, I better move on here. I'll be in trouble. I'm... So they <laughs> is descriptive of some particular group in 2 Timothy 3, 6. For of this sort are 
are they, there's the word again, they, which, now he's going to tell you who they are and what they're doing, which creep into houses, he told you who they were and what they do, and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. Uh, they got some propaganda they're pushing, but they'll be against sound doctrine, and they'll be pushing their doctrine, and they'll go house to house, whether it be by telephone, whether it be by uh, texting, whether it be by emailing somebody, or whether it be by plastering on Instagram, or putting it on Facebook, or what's that other one? TikTok. <laughs> There's all kinds of ways you can spread the truth and there's all kinds of ways you can spread the poison. In the last days, the time shall come, uh, for the time will come when they, 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 they will not endure sound doctrine. And they as a specific group, watch now, context has to define who the they are. Don't ever forget that in the Bible. There are different groups only found out by the context they, and I wrote in my notes, is used in, and it should be are used in. All right, 2 Timothy 2, 23, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Now he's not talking about people. He's talking about, you know, like a person, place, or thing. He's talking about questions. Well, I, want, I give you this verse because I want you to understand the word they in the scriptures. And verse 23 of 2 Timothy 2, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that who? They. Now, it's not talking about people there. It's talking about the questions. They do gender strife. So the word they can be used different ways. So be careful. Um, well, they say we'd want to drink coffee when we was about five years old, six years old, when we'd set ourselves up to the table and... Uh, Boy, your mom, your dad look at you and they say, they say, now they say that'll stunt your growth if you drink that. Yeah. I said, now I didn't realize that then. I thought they was, you know, real important, but it's, it's not. So be careful <laughs> what they say. <laughs> I better get off that. I'm hung up here. All right. So uh, endure sound doctrine. That, that's a good... You see, you mean there's some folks that just don't believe the truth? Yeah, sound doctrine would be truth. Amen. Sound doctrine is a reference to the things we are getting from the Word of God uh, to lead us day by day, to help us in our practical, everyday Christian life, and to uh, help us win others to Christ. Whatever you want to say. New Testament church age doctrine. You say there's some people that don't believe that? Well, the Bible says in the last times, and we see there that the they... Uh, are the, the, those that group that go from house to house and uh, lead captive silly women laden with sins. Remember, we taught on that. And we laid that all out and what that was. I won't go back into that. Led away with divers lust. So they got many lusts and many ideas and many stories and many beliefs, but they don't line up with the doctrine of that book. Amen. And brother, they'll 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 fight you tooth and nail. They'll argue a black sheep white looking right at it. Uh, I've had people say, oh, I believe that book, that book, every word of God is pure. Man, the Psalms, uh, Psalms 12, all the way through there, six down through seven. Man, every, God, every word of God is pure, trying to furnish the verse, so on, so on. But then they say, but I don't believe that part right there. I, I don't say right that. I don't think, I think you're teaching that wrong. I don't think that's what it says. I've had people say that to me here in this church years gone by. Um, Say, what do you mean? What'd they say it over? Oh, I got some of that in my notes here in a minute. I'll give it to you. But I've had folks tell me they don't believe like I believe. I've had people tell me, you don't believe like the pastor believes. I don't think he believes like you believe. I said, I got news for you. We pretty well on the same page on about everything we believe. <laughs> you say, how do you know that? I'm still here, ain't I? He ain't fired me yet. <laughs> so... Some of you need that second cup of coffee, I can tell. All right, all right. Sound doctrine is always hard for some folks to handle. This would be Paul's doctrine, if we're going to narrow this down, especially on the church. Salvation, because you asked me, where do people differ, differ with sound doctrine? Let me give a few things. So you think, uh, the church, doctrine of the church how the church is founded, 
how the church operates, how the government of the church is to perform, uh, who's in leadership, so on and so forth. So let me go through a list. Church, salvation. You know, there's people that believe different things about salvation, and there's only one way that a person, man gets saved today, a person gets saved today, and that thing is Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, at least any man should boast. But there will be 20 people someplace that believe, well, I believe you've got to work it out. Then there'll be somebody says, well, it says over there in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, repent and be baptized. Yeah, well, let me just point something out. You got to repent when you get saved, repent of your sins, and that comes first, and baptism comes second. So don't twist the book, huh? But there's people that do. And they'll, you say, is that why there are so many different denominations? Yeah, and there's a group called non-denominationalists. You say, what's that? Well, that's a group of people who can't get together on any doctrine, so they throw all doctrine out, and they just get in there and kumbaya, Chuck E. Cheese. Huh? Having a big time. Now, don't we like to sing? We like to sing as better and gooder as anybody. But we have never allowed our singing to get in the way of our doctrine. Amen. But when you throw doctrine out, because people say, well, I throw that doctrine out, we we'll just build a whole thing on a bunch of singing and stuff. Well, it won't last long. Because in the, in the last days, well, that's what our text said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. When you find somebody throwing doctrine out the world and replacing it with something else, Generally, it'll be something from the world or something that's uh, of a spiritual spin on it so you can spin it any way you want it. And nobody likes yes or no. Nobody likes let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. They, man, people, here's what happens. Oh, I believe this book. Man, this King James Bible. It's the Word of God. I'm going to stand on this book. But if you uh, want to carry your good news for modern man, I'm okay with that. Let me, let me tell you something right now. I'm not okay with that. I think you got a problem. I think you are for in the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I think you're on a slippery slope if you've got your whatever you've got other than a King James Bible. Say, yeah, now I take it to that next level. Say, what's wrong with people that don't? Something wrong. They go, they it's there in that class, they. They fell down over there someplace, they. I'm not in that class. I'm in this other class. I'm going to stand for what's right, what's strong, what's true, what's been proven, what's been tried. And I don't think I have to apologize to anybody for my stand. Amen. Um, here, when I look at what Paul's trying to teach this young man, uh, when, he, when he talks to him here in verse 3 and verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Oh, they'll believe something, but it'll be nigh unto a fairy tale, a fable. They're back to playing with frogs again, trying to convince you that you'll get warts from playing with frogs. Then I heard if you want to get rid of the warts... <clears throat> You find you an old stump in the woods about half full of rainwater that's sitting there and you get you a good drink out of that and them warts will go away. Say, what are you preaching? Well, that's what a lot of people believe, that kind of junk, that fable. Why, I think, oh, I won't say no names here, but I know somebody on my wife's side that take a dime, spit on that thing and rub on that wart and throw that dime away and next day that wart will be gone. Say, what are you telling... That's that old wives' tale. Yeah, she's shaking her head. Yeah, she remembers. She remembers. <laughs> when I first heard that, I thought, me, a gabbard, throw a dime away? There's something wrong with you, son. <laughs> oh, my. But the sound doctrine, it's always hard for some folks to handle. And, and, and we're in the church here. We're not, I'm not talking about outside. I don't expect people down at the VFW to get it when I say you're saved by grace through faith. I don't expect them to get it. Amen. 
I don't expect them to get it when I, I tell them I'm a Bible believer and I stand on the 1611 King James. I don't expect them to understand or get that. I don't even expect them to get, I go to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. I don't expect them to get that. You know what? I don't expect them to get that. For 44 years since I was been called to preach, I've been preaching and teaching someplace, somewhere, every Sunday, without much exception, my life. I don't expect people to understand that or get that. Matter of fact, they'll say, you're crazy. Yeah. Say, what is it? Well, sound doctrine is always hard for some folks to handle. Now let's step inside the church. You got people in church that can't handle it. Amen. You got people in church, uh, they, they can't handle the straight, narrow path of salvation. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me, he said. There's only one way to heaven, and that's salvation. There's not many ways, there's one way. And you got people come to church, don't believe that. Oh, I had a feeling something run up and down my spine. Boy, and I tingled and I got goose. You ever heard that fable? I got goosebumps. I'm not saying you didn't get goosebumps. That's how you're wired up. Why do you think you have goosebumps? When you get a little chill, you get goosebumps on your arm. You know, I can work outside all day, even at my age. I've been pouring concrete. Boy, I've been having the time. Working out there, start early and sweat all day. I'm wringing, soaking wet when I come in the house about noon to eat my lunch. And it's so cold in our house. Now, it's 90 outside. It's only 70 in our house. But if I sit next to one of those vents, blowing that cold air out on me from that, that air conditioner, I get goosebumps, and it's not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> huh? Be careful. And I've had people come to church and say, well... When, when that group sings, I just get goosebumps. Okay, I get goosebumps when I get cold too, amen. I, it don't mean it's the Holy Ghost. So be careful with some of that stuff. So they get goofed up on church stuff, salvation. You know, a lot of folks come right into the church messed up on baptism. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> They're messed up on baptism. Number one, they're messed up on church membership. They believe if they just show up, they're a member of your church. You ain't no member of this church. You just show up. Now, I'm glad you're here, and I'm happy for you. But every, I preached a message one time that why aren't you a member of the Baptist church? And I think the next week we had four or five families join the church. Say what? They'd just been sitting there, and nobody had joined the church yet. Nobody had walked forward. Nobody had made a commitment. Nobody stepped up to the responsibility. Nobody towed the mark. You say, why? If they were mixed up and messed up on, or didn't know, maybe they didn't know that to become a member of a church, you got to join up. Say, where's that at? First Corinthians chapter 5, when they called that one that was in sin, I mean, I mean, it's, it's a little different than what you were looking for. I know you looking for that verse that said, well, right here it says you got to join the church. No, right there, because they were members of the church, they set one outside of the church. And you couldn't set him out if they wasn't a member. Amen. Amen. You say, much learning hath made thee mad, Paul. Yeah. Sound doctrine. So they're messed up on salvation, messed up on membership, messed up on baptism. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about what we're teaching on for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap themselves teachers having itching ears. They'll believe everything on the face of the earth that anybody else says except the man in the pulpit that's preaching straight from the book. I mean straight from the Lord and the Holy Ghost's Spirit. But they'll have something they believe. So they're goofed up on... on Baptism on membership. You ever see people get messed up on the Lord's Supper? Oh, you better not take the Lord's Supper. Don't take the Lord's Supper. Man, you take the Lord's Supper. What? There's some churches that won't let you take the Lord's Supper. Now, if you're not saved, I get it. I got that. But if you're saved, don't mind stepping up and saying, hey, I'm saved. I may not be a member of your church. And it's been about 20 years since I took the Lord's Supper. You might be right in that thing. Could, would I be welcome to take the Lord's Supper? You know what I'd say? Help yourself, son. You know what some Baptist churches would say? Oh, no, you can't take the Lord's Supper. 
Say, what is that? Well, that's that old thing on open and closed communion. Uh, so they get messed up on the Lord's Supper. You know, there are some folks come in your church, they'd, they'd be mixed up on tongues in this day and age. Say, oh, Phil, no, 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 no. I had a, I, years, years gone by, I tell about it. I had a guy come up to me. I said something about tongues wasn't for this day. Church is in his last days. It's for the early church and transition to the Jews. Tongues were for a sign to the Jews. Went through all the scriptures, showed all the stuff. I mean, I taught that best I could. I thought I'd done an excellent job. He caught me after service. He was not a member. He came frequently. And he run me up one side and down the next and said he wanted me to get up before the church the next Sunday and apologize to the church. And while I did that, he wanted me to form a healing line and let people get in it. And they come up and maybe lay our hands on it. I said, what are you talking about? Well, let me read that verse again. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they, their, what, what, their own lust, oh, they, uh, they got, uh, they, they want it their way? Yeah. After their own lust, get that thing. After their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they've gone everywhere to hear everybody. They've tuned everybody in on the radio and the TV and wherever else they could get them from. And they've tuned them in. They, they're listening to the doctrines. And this is scriptural, what I'm getting ready to say. They're listening to the doctrines of devils. And then they're going to come into your church and sit there in disagreement with what you teach from the word of God. Amen, Brother Phil. That's good teaching today. You're almost preaching, you almost. Let me get a drink and I'll try to hit it a dab. Watch. Mis messed up on the Lord's Supper, messed up on tongues. You know there's people come into your church, they got their idea about money. You remember when I did that thing on money? Do you remember that class? I did it in Sunday school class. It's been two or three years, four years. It's probably time to do it again. And I set a board up here, and I started in, I had about, I don't know what we got here, 50 people, 70 people, 80 people, I don't know. And I divided the number that of the church, I think we was running a couple hundred at the time. I said, divide that by two right there, I'm going to be fair with you, divided that number by two. 100 people, let's go with 100 people. Now let's cut the 100 people in half, let's go 50. And I took 50 people from a congregation of 200 and I wrote down there on that board what that family may or may not make. I went through nurses, police officers, uh, entry level people and I wrote down what the pay should be and brother our offerings were off somewhere around three or four thousand dollars a week you say why because people got their own ideas what they're going to give to God amen and they don't believe in tithing got them sitting right in your church say what is this in time now they'll give to something if there's a need if they can see a cause they'll, I brought a bunch of paintings you know I like to paint don't you I brought a bunch of paintings in here one time. I set them all up there. I probably made some folks mad. I don't know. But pastor let me do it. So running me off, run him off too. Amen. <laughs> you know, I sold every painting I had. Uh, I had people give me $100 for one. Somebody give me $35 for one. Somebody give me $50 for another. So, and I raised enough money selling paintings here in a couple of different churches. I drove all the way to California in that RV preaching my way out there. You say, how'd you do that? People will give if they got a cause, but they sure don't believe in tithing. Ain't we, ain't they funny? <laughs> So we get mixed up on money and tithing. We get mixed up on church discipline. Oh, don't say nothing. Oh, no. Just let them go ahead and keep on sinning. You let somebody keep on sinning and they're living in an open sin in your church and you don't deal with that thing as leadership in your church, brother, you're a disgrace to that book. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Say, have you ever had to do that? We did it right here. We'll go into that detail. Watch out. Mess up on church discipline. You know, there's a lot of churches mixed up on women. <laughs> you know, you, oh, you say, what are you going through this for? You ask me, who are the they? And what are, they, what are people mixed up on? I'm just hitting some simple things. You know, people come into your church, they're mixed up on women. I've had, I think we were here, we had a popcorn preaching, and some woman put her hand up and wanted to preach. Huh? Well, didn't the pastor let her have her say? 
I don't think so. Say, what happened? I don't think she came back. <laughs> Say, where was she from? I don't know where she came from. Did you read about that Baptist preacher up there someplace? They hired her and she'd been in there a couple years. You read about that? They had to fire her. Now, I'm telling you the truth. I'm reading this right out of Fox News. You say, you believe that stuff? Well, let me just give you the illustration. I thought it was pretty flamboyant. She came out and said she was transgender. She was a guy that went ahead on and became a woman, and now her life goal was to pastor a church, and she's pastoring a Baptist church. Hold on, hold on. Get your Bible right there in our text. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Ha! Huh. They, they're all over the place. But it's the ones that get in the church that I'm worried about. You know there's people mixed up about a, wo a woman's role in church? Amen. You know there's people that come into your church that don't have a clue what a deacon is? Now I'm getting down where we live. Amen. Huh? Do you know there's people that come into church, they don't know what a pastor should do or what he is? They don't know what an evangelist is. A lot of churches don't even have an evangelist, and, and they, they, don't, they don't even see the ministry of evangelism. I think you're missing, you're missing a lot. Just about everything a church has trouble with today are the things that cause, that are happening in the last days. But after their own lust shall they heap themselves teachers having itching ears. And you'll have these people that'll come in and brother, they'll, they'll want you to listen to that guy and that guy. And they say, well, how, why don't we get that guy in there? Man, he is the greatest. And boy, get this lady over here and let her speak. But she can, I said, no, wait a minute. I just don't think we're that ecumenical. Amen. Amen. Uh, their own here, here, but after their own lust shall they heap themselves teachers having itching ears. Their own lusts are folks just believing what they want to believe, regardless of what God's Word says about it. You say, what is that? That's a sick situation, man. And I got a sub-point here. And they will find or seek out teachers that teach what they want to hear. You say, what is that? Itching ears. Now, you say, well, I'm out of time, but let me give you this, uh, let me give you this verse. I didn't give you many verses. You know the church is not the only group of God's people that had issues with these kind of things? Let me prove that to you. If you have a Bible, it's Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9 and 10. You say, why are you going there? Because it's Old Testament times. It's in, the, it's in the times of the children of Israel. And the children of Israel were, are called God's people and are still God's people today. And they're kind of a, a group set aside. Matter of fact, in the New Testament, it's referred to the church in the wilderness. Not a church like we have, not a New Testament church. But that assembly, that called out assembly was God's people. And I want to see what the prophet had to say. And God recorded that thing. And the Old Testament for our learning and our admonition were to learn from it he says in verse 9 of Isaiah 30 that this is a rebellious people he's talking about the nation of Israel when they sinned against God and they went against God and they went to every soothsayer every idolater and bowed to every idol and now they're in captivity and here the preacher comes along still preaching it straight still preaching it strong and still preaching it true uh, that this is a rebellious people lying children children that will not hear the law of God which say to the seer and the seer was the man of God he saw the things of God see not and to the prophets prophesy not uh, unto us right things speak unto us smooth things prophesy deceits uh, brother that's what they wanted back in that day hey hey wake up that's kind of what people want today they'll say do you think you could tone it down just a little bit your tone kind of rubs me the wrong way. Good. Maybe you'll wake up, grow a brain. Amen. I'm not, I'm, I don't mean to condescend here, but I don't have much space for a person that calls himself a Christian when they can't line up with the doctrine of that book, but they've got their own ideas and their own 
things they want to believe and their own things they want to promote. They even come in, they want to promote. A lot of times they want to promote emotional things. I'm done. I'm out of time. I've got 14 more verses. I'll have to finish this next week. I'm out of time, guys. All right, Father, thank you for this morning. And Lord, you're, you're good to us. You show us, you lead us, you guide us, and you help us. Now, bless. I know Pastor has to come and preach in a few moments. We got to sing. Lift our voices up to thee, and we pray, God, that people could come and hear salvation and get saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. A little long-winded here.